our community, brother. Miss you and your family. I hope you guys are doing well, but it's good to see you this morning, my man. Hey, if y'all have your Bible, would you open with me to Psalms chapter 1? Psalms 1. Whoa! There you go. Hey, I'm excited to, uh, to be able to share with you guys this morning. I, I am a little disappointed with our, our senior recognition. Why don't we have any cowbells or air horns or confetti cannons? Stacy, come on, dude. I was ready for that. But you'll do it at the graduation. No, I'm just kidding. That's cool. Hey, uh, I, I do uh, know all these grads, high school and college. I know that they're good kids. I know that they have bright futures because I know uh, where their heart lies. I know who uh, is in, in control of them. Before we get into the Word, giving you a chance to flip over to Psalms, I do want to do something very quickly uh, in, in regards to our grads. Uh, if you're a parent or a grandparent of uh, one of these college or high school grads, would you do me a favor and stand up for just a brief moment, please? Yeah. Guys, I know all these parents, and I know they're good parents, and I know that they've done a great job of raising their children, so thank you guys uh, for setting the tone at home. That's where it starts. That it, it starts with, with what are you feeding them at home, and, and if you're not putting a stake in the ground and, and doing what Joshua said and say, as for me in my house, we will serve the Lord, then you're doing them a disservice. So I know these guys have been doing that, so thank you guys. Uh, if you are here in this church, because a lot of these guys grew up here at Hopewell from the time they were very, very young. So if you know one of these guys and you were, maybe they're a WANA leader from the time they were in Puggles or TNT or Sparks, uh, or you've led them in small groups or in some capacity uh, going through HSM or even in college, would you do me a favor and stand up and be recognized for just a moment? Jose, we're getting old, man, aren't we? <laughs> hey, thank you guys. Uh, I know these moms and dads appreciate you and partnering alongside you. That's our goal here is to, to help you as moms and dads, as y'all do the battle at home, that we're there to, to help pour in and do what we can to help you guys. So thank you guys for serving. Thank you all of our uh, servants downstairs who are with our children right now. That's a big role. That's a big thing that we need to, uh, to have a heart for, and I know that this church does. So thank you guys for that. So as we look at uh, Psalms chapter 1, I've really enjoyed uh, chewing on this this week. Uh, but guys, as y'all get ready for this next step, I, I want y'all uh, to think about something. I'm not going to so much tell you guys what you need to do. Uh, I do want to ask you guys the question of what kind of man or what kind of woman do you want to be? We're talking about legacy. So I'm not going to tell you the things to do, but wh who do you want to be? And I don't want anybody to, to tune me out if you are not a graduate. This is for every single one of us. I don't care if you're 18 years old or 88 years old. It's never too late to ask yourself the question, who do I want to be? Am I satisfied with what I've done with my life and who I'm giving it to? Because I hope by the end of this, if maybe you thought, well, maybe I've just, I've been wasting my time. I've been all about myself. I, I've made no difference in someone's life. Let me tell you something. God's redemption and God's love never fails. And it's not done as long as you're here on this earth. So there is time. And I hope and pray that we'll, we'll allow that to speak to our hearts this morning. So let's read uh, Psalms chapter 1. If you wouldn't mind standing with me as we read God's Word, we're going to read the first three verses. It says, Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and, his law, and in his law he meditates day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in its season, whose leaf also shall not wither, and whatever he or she does shall prosper. Would you pray with me? Father, we thank you for this morning. God, again, we thank you for these young men and women. Father, I pray for each and every one of them. I pray for each and every person in this room, God. Father, if there is someone, God, who is, is not living a, a blessed life that it says so in the Bible, Lord, I pray that you would change their hearts right now in these next few minutes. And Lord, that we would be forever changed and we would go out and we would leave a legacy of wanting to take forth the gospel. 
Lord, that we would be the light and the darkness, and we'll thank you and praise you for it. It's in Jesus' name. Amen. You may have a seat. So guys, as we read this passage, you'll see the very first word right there is blessed or blessed. What does it mean to be blessed or blessed? That, that word is used a lot in the Psalms. You see it 23 times throughout there. And, and really, in a nutshell, what it means is it means to be happy. And not just any kind of happy, but to have a real inward joy towards something. It changes everything about you. There is nothing in your life. We can be happy, but that's an emotion that changes in the snap of a finger. And inward joy is something that never changes no matter what our circumstances are in life. And that's what you guys need to have. But what, what does that look like? Well, what it looks like is when you are blessed, you're not just wanting, you're not just doing the right things. You know, God's word says to do certain things. And you don't just look at it like a checklist to do it. You don't just do the right things. You enjoy doing the right things. You take joy and gladness and wanting to live out what God has in store for our lives. So that's what I want for you guys today. And uh, I don't have three points for you guys to write down. There's, there's a note section there on your thing because, well, I'm a youth pastor and I just don't plan ahead like that. That's just how it works. Okay, but you can take some notes with me. But what I want you to do is answer this question with me. What does it look like to live and influence for the gospel? Some of you guys getting ready to graduate in high school, you go into college. Some of you guys just jumping right into work, which is awesome. Some of you guys who just got a college degree, welcome to the real world, get a job, let's get to work. But how do we live and influence to the, for the gospel? How are we to be blessed? See, I've always said when, when you, what our goal is in this life, especially what I say to these guys as they graduate now, is that our goal is to uh, have a positive impact on community and culture, but do that for the glory of God. That's our call in life, is to have a positive impact on community and culture for the glory of God, for the kingdom of heaven. So what does it look like to do that and to be blessed? Well, it's, it's three parts, and there's three questions that you have to ask yourself. And this is what I want us all to ask ourselves this morning. First question is this, who are you doing life with? Who are the people that you are spending the most time with? We, we look at that here in verse 1 right here at the beginning of the Psalms. See, verse 1 says, Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly. So the first part of that question that I want you to understand is this. Who advises you matters. Y'all with me? Who advises you matters. Guys, who you are listening to who you are going to, first of all, if you are going through something and you need to know some wisdom, if you're not going to this first and foremost, I invite you to do that. Because any question that you have answered is going to be found right here. These are not just printed words in a book, guys. This is a living, breathing word of your creator who loves you and wants you to know what is the right stuff. So I advise you to go that there. But then there are people in this world who we trust and we go to. And you need to be mindful of those people that you're going to. Young guys, I know that there are so many influencers out there. You see them on social media. You hear them in the, the music. You see them in the movies. You see them on television. And guys, I'm telling you, a lot of those people will make it look like they're giving you good counsel and things that are going to make everybody just live all hunky-dory together and we're all supposed to just be accepting of one another and the things that we do. And guys, that's not biblical. That's not biblical. They are giving you counsel into the ungodly ways, and they mask it to make it look good and sound good. So you need to be wise about who you are spending time with. Guys, who you, who you run with will tell you a lot about your life. The people that you are spending the most time with will tell you a lot. And maybe some of you guys are mowing through that right now. Who am I spending the most time with in my life? Well, guys, there's three words in verse 1 that we look at. Walk, stand, and sit. And right here, walking is the first thing that's going to take place. Walking towards a group of people or an ideal. So if you hear one thing and you're going this way, you're already being influenced as to what they say and what they are about. And you need to be very mindful and prayerful about who those people are and what those things are that you're going towards. 
Because if you're walking in the counsel of the ungodly, you, you don't even see it, but you're already starting down a path of destruction. And I want you to be mindful of that. Second question that goes hand in hand with that is this. Or second point that goes with the question is that your actions matter. Your actions matter. So not only walking in the, in the counsel of the ungodly, but standing in the path of sinners. Standing in the path basically means you've walked towards one way, and if you're walking towards that ungodly counsel, then you're just going to find yourself right there in the middle of it. And you're standing. And what that means is that you're taking part in the things that they are doing. And if they are ungodly things, you are going to find yourself guilty by association. Y'all with me? So you need to make sure that you are standing on the right spots. The youth will tell you guys, and they get tired of it because I say it every week, but I'm pretty sure by the time these guys graduate, and they've heard it about 3,000 times, they're going to catch that I say three things matter every day. What is it, guys? Your words. Apparently they didn't get it. Never mind. (laughs) Your words, your actions, and what? Thoughts. Attitude. Thank you. Your words, your actions, and your attitude or your thoughts matter every single day, guys. So you need to be mindful of the things that you're doing. And a lot of that starts from that walk. Who you're listening to all of a sudden can make its way to your mind and your heart. And then you're going towards things that maybe you shouldn't go towards. See, I grew up uh, listening to what, what I call oldies. All right, Some of you guys in this room, y'all won't think of it as oldies, and you take offense to me calling it oldies because that's your, your glory days. That's you growing up. But growing up, you know, Fox 97. Most of you guys remember listening to Fox 97. Randy and Spiff in the morning, okay? So I listened to that. That's what I grew up on. I grew up with the Beatles and Frankie Valli and the Four Seasons and, and all that. So one of my favorite oldies groups, I'm not going to call it oldies, it's oldies. So... <laughs> One of my favorite groups is a group called Three Dog Night. Is anybody familiar with Three Dog Night? Okay. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Y'all got really excited about that. Easy now. Three Dog Night is, a, is a, a group, and one of their most popular songs, one of my favorite songs by them, is a story. And it's a story of a guy who goes to a party. And at this party, all of a sudden he realizes he's sitting amongst a bunch of friends who there's drugs going on. There's people passed out on the floor. His girlfriend's passed out. There's drugs being done, just all this stuff, and it's freaking him out. And all of a sudden, he realized something. His mom had been telling him something all along, and it just came back to him. And what was it? Mama told me not to come. That ain't the way to have fun, son. Right? The wise counsel all of a sudden came about. And he said, I've seen things that I have never seen before. I don't know what it is, but I don't want to see it no more. He knew what was right and what was wrong. And it was time for him to no longer be walking in the wise or the unwise counsel. It was time for him to no longer be standing in the path of sinners. It was time to make a change in who he was hanging out with. And that's something that we need to be mindful of every single day, guys. And then the last point that goes with who are you doing your life with is where you abide matters. Advise, actions, and abide. Last part of verse 1 says, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. See, guys, if you're not careful, not only are you going to go down a path, and not only are you going to stand there, but guys, if you find yourself meditating on that stuff and sitting there, you know, we, we hear that word abide a lot. If you abide somewhere, like you can look into my humble abode, my home, that's where I take rest and residence at. See, if you're not careful, all of a sudden you're going to find yourself sitting. You're going to sit amongst the people that are doing things that are wrong. Thing, and it says sitting At the seat of the scornful. You know what it means to be scornful? It basically means to brag and to be boastful and knowing that you were doing wrong. And if you were sitting right there with them, you're saying, man, I've got a seat right here with the braggers. And that's you. And you've got to be very, very mindful of that stuff. Because if you find yourself abiding in that, then all of a sudden it's become a lifestyle. It's become what you're known for and what you're about. So I say all that to say, guys, you need to be very, very mindful of who you are doing your life with. But the Bible says that you are blessed 
If you are walking not in that kind of counsel, if you're not standing in that path, if you're not sitting at that seat. So what does that look like then? All right, well, then that takes us to our second question. Number two is this. What are you dwelling on? Where is most of your thoughts, most of your time, most of your energy going towards in your life? In verse 2, it says, but his delight, the things that he is dwelling the most on is in the law of the Lord. And on that, he meditates day and night. That means he's, he's dwelling on it. If you want to see your words and your actions and your attitudes going towards the Almighty and going towards the things that are right, then you have to be taking time to be sitting with that. If we want our walk to be an influence for the gospel every single day, guys, then we must grow in our walk with Jesus daily. Not just time to time, not just coming in here on Sundays, not just coming to HSM on Wednesday nights or going to Awana Wednesday nights, but daily finding time to spend and growing with Jesus. And we do that in word and we do that in prayer. One of the greatest influences for me, an example to look towards on what does it look like to dwell on the right stuff is Paul, the Apostle Paul. See, Paul, guys, developed a, a rhythm of praying three times a day, morning, noon, and night, three hours a day. And for some of us, that sounds kind of crazy, right? Three hours a day praying? Are you kidding me? That sounds crazy to us, but then we think about the fact that we take three and a half hours a day to be on our phones. Do y'all know that the average American is on their phones three and a half hours a day? Not texting or calling on their phones, not, not just doing work on their phones, like looking at your phone. That's big. There's a, uh, there's a pastor named Ben Stewart that I, I found a great phrase from that keeps me in mind of the things that I'm doing in my life, and he says a great phrase that I'll never forget, and I, I try to use it every single day. But he says, what you think about, you will care about. And what you care about, you will chase. Okay? What you think about, you will care about. And what you care about, you will chase. So how could Paul know God so intimately and so deeply? Well, it's because Paul was spending quality time with God three hours a day. That's how he could know the will of God. That's how he could walk in the wise counsel of God. That's why his actions and words were always full of grace and mercy. And for some of us, we find ourselves dwelling not in the presence of God, but we find ourselves dwelling in, in the chaos and the anxiety of our phones and, and our world, and that's why we find ourselves feeling so anxious and so depressed and, and, and going and gravitating towards sinful things because we find ourselves dwelling on that every single day. So guys, I'm telling you, hey, when you get a chance, put that down. Put it down. Dwell in the presence of God. See, we think about that stuff, and we wonder why we feel that way, but it, guys, it's our inputs that determine our outputs. Our inputs determine our outputs. So I'm telling you guys, it, some of you, you're wondering why we're not advancing as people, or you're not advancing in your faith or growing like that. Well, what you're thinking about are the things that you care about, and what you're caring about are the things you're going to chase in your life. And so I hope and pray that you will make sure that the cross, that Jesus is in consideration of every word, action, and attitude that you have every single day. From the time you wake up, the things that you're about to go do, the words that you're about to say to people, the thoughts that you're having, I pray that you are ever conscious of the cross and the high price that was paid for you out of love and grace. And that Jesus did that and continues to do that in your life. That you will ever be mindful of that. Okay? And the last thing is this. Last question is, what fruit are you bearing? What does your fruit look like? See, I have an old uh, FCA staff advisor that I had when I was in high school. She may or may not be sitting right up front right here. She has purple hair. Um, <laughs> easy to find <laughs> but every time I talked with her about you know people or myself 
or people that we're trying to minister to or people that we're worried about going down certain paths, she always says the same thing. She's like, where's the fruit? She's always said that. Look at the fruit of someone's life and you'll tell a lot about where they're going and what path they're on. So if you look at verse 3, and this is how we wrap this up. Guys, this is a lot of stuff that may sound like, well, you need to do this, you need to do this, you need to do this. And guys, that's not, we're not being legalistic and we're not saying these things. What I'm saying is, is that what price was paid for us should change our actions and our thoughts and our words. So if you look at that, it said, he will, if he meditates and delights in the ways of God and spending time with God, and he meditates on it day and night and every action and word and thing he does, it says he will be like a tree that is planted by rivers. You ever seen trees that are right beside a creek or a river? You don't really see those things ever find a way to wither out and die. And that's because it says they bring forth its fruit in its season because it's, it's constantly getting that life, sunlight, water, all the things that are needed to, to help that grow. See, what we need, guys, is to know that we are a tree that is constantly nourished by a constant supply of grace every single day. And if you wake up and you're mindful of that, I, I had a pastor friend just this morning tell me, hey, you know what? You're going to wake, actually he told me this last night, he said, you're going to wake up tomorrow and, and the mercies and love of God is going to be new today. No matter what happened yesterday or the day before, that doesn't matter because God's grace and God's love is new today. Isn't that awesome? So as I wrap this up, I want you to flip over with me to, to Psalms chapter 32. We're going to look at the first verse of that as well, and this is how we wrap. Guys, if, if you were a tree planted right there by that river of grace running by the blood of Jesus Christ, and it, it saved you, and it's washed you clean, so it doesn't matter. Hey, guys, if you've lived your whole life and you've been walking and standing and sitting in, in the scornfulness and the sinfulness and the wickedness, let me tell you guys, like I said at the beginning, it's not too late. It's not too late to make a change in your life and make an impact for community and culture for the glory of Jesus. And this is what it looks like. Look at verse 1 of, verse, of uh, Psalms 32. It says, blessed is he whose transgressions are forgiven. Forgiven, guys, forgotten. All the things and wickedness of your past are nothing. God doesn't even remember them. Whose sin is covered. Blessed is the man whom the Lord does not impute iniquity and whose spirit there is no deceit. See, all the sin and things of the past, guys, are washed away. And if we're mindful of that, mindful of the cross and mindful of Jesus Christ every single day, guys, it changes everything about us. It's not too late, wherever you're at, in this, it, whatever you're at, 18, 88, it doesn't matter. There's time for you to make a change and walk in a certain way that is going to shine light in the darkness. Grads, hey, I love you, and y'all know that. I'm about to share even more with you guys at lunch here in just a little while. College grads, I love y'all, and I appreciate you, and now... Things are about to get really real, more real than they already were. But I pray that you are always mindful of those things. Every single day we would ask ourselves, who are we doing life with? Maybe you need to make a change this morning. Maybe you need to change the crowd that you're hanging out with. You know you've needed to, but you just won't. Maybe you need to make a change in your life. Hey, what are, what are you spending time dwelling on, guys? What are you spending the most time doing? Is it impacting your life in a way that you don't want? And I want you to be looking out for yourself. If you really want to see where you're at and you want to kind of take a measuring stick of, of where you're at, hey, what fruit are you bearing? What's the fruit that you have? You guys getting ready to go on to the next thing? I pray you'll be ever mindful of those things. You know that I'm always a phone call or text away or a visit in case you go to jail and you don't need to call mom and dad and you need to call me. I'll come get you out. We can do that. But I also want you to do this. Find a way to fall madly and deeply in love with this. Fall in love with this. Meditate on it and know that you're not just reading words printed on a page. You're hearing the voice of your creator who loves you 
very, very much. And it will change your life every single day if you'll do that. So, Father, I thank you for this morning. God, I thank you. Lord, for, God, who you are for your, for your son, Jesus. Lord, I thank you for the change you've made in my life. God, I don't know where I'd be right now if it wasn't for you. Father, I pray for these young men and women. Lord, I pray, and I'm excited about the, uh, the opportunity that they have in their life. Lord, many of them are getting a chance to go and to be light at a college campus. Some of them are going into a workplace that desperately needs to have light. It doesn't need any more depravity. It doesn't need any more hopelessness. It doesn't need any more uh, shamefulness. God, it needs grace and it needs love. And these guys are going to have an opportunity to go and take that. Lord, if there's anybody here, God, that they've just, they've had their life just marinated, Father, in that path. They've been standing, they've been sitting, they've been walking in all the wrong ways. I pray that they would know right here, right now, they can make a change. Lord, would you help them to come forward just in a moment? Father, would you help them to stand and to come forward and just to kneel at your presence at the altar? God, and to just give their life back over to you. Father, there may be somebody in this room right now that, Lord, they just realize that their life has been nothing but just going towards all the wrong stuff. God, I pray that right here, right now, that could all change. That you would help them to be bold and to be strong and, Father, to be desperate to come down and, Father, to receive the greatest gift that they could ever receive, and that is a saving relationship in your son, Jesus Christ. Would they come and find a pastor? Who would be standing up front would you help them to say I need that I want that and God that you would see that change take place in their life right here right now but God would you help us to respond as you see fit would you help us and, and move in our hearts to do that Lord and we'll thank you and praise you for it it's in Jesus name amen guys you stand and respond as you see fit there will be pastors standing up front if you need to talk with one of us let's give this time to the Lord